Football is the biggest sport in the world. So has 442 editor David Hall got the best job in sport journalism? Let's find out. I decided I wanted to be a journalist because I worked on my student paper. I worked mainly on music though actually. I was a music writer and uh, so I covered lots of gigs. It was quite a good place to write about music at the university because it had the biggest venue in the city. It was on campus so all the bands that wanted to play in East Anglia played on campus so we were quite lucky. Um, but the paper won an award. It won the uh, NUS Guardian Media Award for best paper. Um, but I'd already caught the bug by then. It was brilliant. I'd been at Haymarket for, uh, I think it was nearly three years. Um, and 442 was always a title that I'd, you know, coveted, wanted to work on. And I'd worked my way up to editor level. Um, and it's a dream job, really, because it combines the two things I've pretty much love the most, which is football and magazines. So uh, I knew that there was movement going on in the team because the, the current editor, who's my boss now, was moving up into a more uh, commercial role, publishing role. And as soon as I heard that, I came out and I can I apply? And they had a full application process and, and I was successful. So it was pretty pretty rigorous application process. It took, it took me four days to do the work for the application. The hardest thing about being a, an editor is quality control, making sure that everything that goes in the magazine is up to standard and is right. Because although that sounds like a basic job of an editor, it's quite hard to implement sometimes when you're pushing through like 105 editorial pages. Um, and sometimes it's to tell people what they're doing is not good enough um, but it's what means that I'm doing my job properly so if I if I go for an issue that we've put out and I go that was a good issue then I'm happy with with my with my role and what I do you know I take great pride in what I do and if I think something rubbish has gone in then I beat myself up about it so it's important that I do the best I can before it goes to print. Also, I'm conscious the magazine is very expensive um, compared to a lot of titles, in particularly in the men's market, where we're, we're pretty highly priced. We're a premium product, I'd say. So I'm very conscious of that too, and I have to make sure that what we do is is, is worth the money. Uh, well, the best thing is obviously that I get to um, do amazing stuff. You know, I'm the editor of the world's biggest football magazine. You know, since I've been since I've been the editor of the magazine, I've I've played at Wembley twice. I've played at Upton Park and scored. I have been to the Bernabeu and seen the Clasico. I have been to uh, two Champions League finals. What What's great about the job is that I'm my job is my my hobby, so I'm incredibly privileged to be able to do this because I. You know, I go to football, I, I love football, I will talk to pretty much anyone about football at any point of the day or night, and yet here I am doing it for my, for my job. So I would argue it's probably the best job in, in magazine journalism. If you, if you like football, then there isn't a better job, basically. I don't really get to, to talk to players um, that much. I deal with agents and I deal with clubs and I deal with brands, you know, who have access to players a lot. Uh, so I have lots of conversations like at the moment I'm talking we're in the, we're in the sort of um, final throes of confirming time with Wayne Rooney and, uh, and Neymar for our next cover um, through Nike because uh, Nike are now making the England kit so that's how we're, we're getting Rooney and Neymar is also a Nike athlete so they, that's going to happen in at Santos at his club so but I'm dealing with public relations people and the FA and that kind of stuff, not not with the players direct. So. 442 has been around for a long time. Next year we will have been around for 20 years. And it's over 20 years we've built up a, a level of trust that I would argue doesn't really exist between many media outlets and footballers and the world of football. So whenever we go in for an interview, we're always starting from a position of trust. Um, so we are very, very fortunate in, in that and we are able to command a certain level of access that I don't really think anyone else gets. Um, 
So, uh, starting from that point, getting people, getting people ad hoc doesn't really happen. You know, we can't go, hey Neymar, do you want to come and do a shoot? You know, we have to think way, way in advance. And with someone like Dortmund's, where we got a lot of access, it was kick-started by Puma, who make their kit. Um, but really the club are the ones who, who wanted to do it and drove it through, because we got amazing access. We, we interviewed, I think, three first-team players, including Lewandowski and Royce, who are probably the, the two I'd be, well, when Goethe goes, they're two best players. Um, and we got access for the photo shoot with Lewandowski, Royce, Kiel, the captain, um, Goetze and Klopp, and they all turned up together, which is very, very unusual. So we actually, when we were in Spain, we had five guys there ready to shoot, which is how we managed to create that cover where they were all kind of riffing off each other. It wasn't, you know, five separate shoots, which we had then had to sort of together in Photoshop. Um, so, uh, but again, we had to plan that. You know, Arsenal, the Arsenal cover we did in the last year, it took 10 months from start to finish, 10 months of talking and convincing the club. And that was done direct with the club. That was, you know, this will be a good story. You know, we, we should do this. You know, you guys are in a, a, an interesting position now. And, and they had a story they wanted to tell, you know, which was basically like, we, 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 do, it, we do it our way or, or no way. Ideas is, is a currency that we trade on. Well, one of the ones with the biggest impact has been the player who's our anonymous columnist. He's a professional player who um, we, we basically signed up and it's been, you know, the most annoying thing about that was that we did it and then the Guardian did the secret footballer and it was like, that was annoying because they, they kind of, we started the thunder rumbling and then they stole it all. Um, but our, the player is, is, has been great for us because it's, showing that we, you know, it kind of shows the level of access we have to the game. You know, we're right inside the game, 4 4 and that's where we see ourselves. You know, there are players out there, they'll, they'll sing the praises of 4 4 Jamie Carragher, for example, is a subscriber to 4 4 and he'll take it on the bus on away trips and stuff and show it to the lads, you know, on, in the Liverpool team. Um, so it's not only the fact that we sell quite a lot of copies of 442, it's also the people who read it, you know, it's, it's very influential in the game. But who else? I mean, Salgado was, was good. Um, we had him for two years as a, as a columnist. I had a really difficult interview with Graham Souness once, and it wasn't, it wasn't really his, his fault. It, I, was, I wasn't properly prepared, um, which is a good example for young journalists. Um, I, I basically had the interview dumped in my lap about an hour before I was supposed to go, and he had a book coming out. It was like his, you know, his life story or something like that. And it was like, here's the book. The interviews are now going. To the, and I and I went, and it was toe curling me bad because I was kind of like, so Turkey, that was interesting. <laughs> and he was a bit like, uh, yeah. And, and he he tried. I think he tried to help me along a bit, but I just very quickly ran out of questions. And I was like, right, that's it. And he went, that was pretty painless. And got up and walked out of the room. And I was like, yeah, I really, I really balls that one, one up. But um, yeah, it still ran. It was, only, it was only two pages in the end. But we managed to get something out of it. I've stopped talking about Football 2 as a magazine. I talk, talk about it more as a, as a brand now. So we've shown we can do a great app. You know, we know we can do a great magazine. It's about executing that across tablet and web now as well and we want everything to feel like 442 um, so print who knows I would say that as long as people want to keep having the experience of buying and reading a magazine we'll keep publishing it so that settles it it might not be a walk in the park but getting paid to live drink and eat football surely that's the dream